Um, I've worked for three Tory MPs, one a long-standing MP who worked for uh, 20 years before standing down at the last election. Subsequently, I've worked for two new MPs, and it's all a very different experience. Um, it really depends on uh, the kind of MP you're working for, whether you're in government or not, whether you're in opposition or not, whether your MP is uh, a, just a, a content backbencher looking after constituents, working hard on a select committee, as one of my MPs was. Um, it's a very, it can be a very different role um, depending on the MP that you're working for. But no matter who you're working for, it's a seriously busy working life. The hours are very, very long. Uh, the support staff is um, uh, there, but uh, they're not really uh, um, as attentive as perhaps they might be in private enterprise. The accommodation and kit that you get is certainly not state of the art. The money is appalling. Um, but so it should be. We're paid by the public. So you don't come to work in Parliament if you want to make a lot of money. It's not what people are there to do. Um, Parliament runs pretty much on a shoestring and salaries included in this. But I'm not complaining. I absolutely love what I do. If you paid me triple what I earn now, I wouldn't work anywhere else. And the reason for that is that I know when I'm working in Parliament, I can make a real change to people's lives and it's the only place that I can do that from as effectively and as efficiently as I can. So I'm really blessed. I've got the most fulfilling working life that I've ever had in my life. I'm in my 50s um, and as I said, I wouldn't move before. So what do I do? I run the office. That means that I monitor the budget. I hire and fire staff. We've only got three full-time staff, but they all need to be working at the peak of their capabilities because the workload is so busy. Um, I keep the tide of correspondence away from my MP. I'm basically keeping it back while he gets on with what he must do, which is develop his political career and talk to his real interests. We get about 150 emails a day into his inbox, which I look after. I get about 50 to 70 emails. Every single one has to have something done to it. So I'm fielding the work. I'm chucking it to case workers. I'm chucking it to the people down in the constituency. Um, I'm responding when things need to be responded to. Um, every email gets an answer. All of them need allocating and having something done to them. I look after governance and compliance. So. There are a lot of rules that govern MPs' lives. They, have, they, they are entirely transparent as far as their finances go, so I need to make sure that everything this guy does is fully transparent and absolutely within the rules of the House of Commons and the Electoral Commission. Um, and I'm still learning some of those rules now, and I've been at it for a while. I run the diary. It said, if you run the diary, you run the man. I know exactly where he's going, I'm telling him where to go, I'm telling him what meetings are important, what aren't, who to meet, who to avoid. I look after getting him to his select committee, I look after setting up and establishing his all-party parliamentary groups. I commission research from the library where he needs it, where we're going to have to write speeches on subjects that he's not particularly au okay fait with, and I draft things like formal parliamentary questions that need to go to ministers, secretaries of state for answers. And I advise him which debates he should be speaking in, which to avoid, who to meet, who to avoid. And I'm really, in the end, helping him to shape his political future. On to that. What skills do you need to work for an MP? Most of them are pretty basic, but I'll say them. You need to be able to spell. <laughs> and that is not common these days. You need to know where to put an apostrophe and where not to. You need to write. You need to be able to write clearly, fluently, and quickly. And the more practice you get at it, the better you are. And you need to be unafraid, because you've got to be making mistakes all the way through your career. And you need to be able to have a thick skin to know that when those mistakes are made, you learn from them and you get up and you keep going. Because it's too busy to stop and think and dwell on it. You need some statistical skills. If you're commissioning research and looking through papers, you need to be able to spot where the maths is out. Um, I'm not a nat natural mathematician, but I've picked up enough 
to know where I see a research paper that's got some stats in, I've got to look very carefully at the numbers because if those stats are out and my MP gets up and starts talking in the chamber to the figures and the figures are wrong, he's not going to be believed. So you've got to have an eye for detail and an eye for stats. You need to be a fast reader and a quick assimilator of new info. Um, when I mentioned that I was having to put polishing uh, notes on uh, a speech about the Export Credit Guarantees Department, that was the first thing I had to do in my working life about seven, eight years ago, and I hadn't a clue what this department did. I didn't understand why it was important, and within a day I had to grasp all of it. So you've got to be quick on your feet, and you also have to know who to ask. So a lot of the time you won't know the answers to things. Just be unafraid and ask questions. People are there to help, by and large. You need to have a thick skin. Um, uh, there's a lot of abuse and a lot of offensive abuse that comes your way through constituents, through the press. Um, you do need to be able to roll with the punches a fair bit and in the end realise that you can just get up and walk away and tomorrow's another day. But a thick skin does help. You need to juggle a load of balls at the one time, so it's a really busy job. Don't get phased by it. Um, sometimes you just have to get up, walk away from the desk for a while and then come back and tackle things again. You need to be imaginative and creative and come up with solutions for all the problems that will present themselves. And the ones that I mentioned at the start are absolutely <coughs> true. How do you deal with somebody who thinks that B Sky B controlling their thoughts? I can tell you. <laughs> and finally, when you're working with an MP, it is a very close relationship. You get to know them very, very well. Uh, and you do have to believe very strongly in what they are and what they do. That relationship is a very special professional one. Uh, it is always professional. Um, and you will get to know them almost as well as their husbands and wives. And it really cannot do unless you totally believe that they are people of deep integrity, which every MP I've ever met is, and like what they're doing and want to help them do the best for their constituents, the best for the country, and the best for themselves.